This is a Casey Tech School video on how to design a printed circuit board using this software called Fritzing. The design that we want to make today is an Arduino Nano terminal breakout board, which takes the popular Arduino Nano and allows it to be plugged in on top of our own made printed circuit board and gives us the opportunity to be able to connect up external components and sensors like the one in the small video without having to use messy and non-robust type breadboards. This will involve us designing the printed circuit board using Fritzing and then using Fritzing to export the artwork that we need as an etchable PDF. Further on from this, we can then use the design to manufacture a PCB, then populate and solder a PCB. Finally, we have the completed product. In our case though, Today's video is just focused on designing the printed circuit board in Fritzing and then exporting the artwork which we can use to manufacture a printed circuit board. Well, how do we get Fritzing? You can see the web page listed here. Uh, it used to be a free software. Now you have to pay a small donation, but there is options to get it free. It just means going to this alternative website and it means you have to be a little bit computer savvy and download the source code and then convert it into a usable binary or an executable file as per the instructions from this website. I'll let you decide which path you want to take. Okay, so now we're going to open up Fritzing. Got a shortcut on my desktop. So this is the opening screen for Fritzing. If we look up here, we can see there's several tabs up the top. We've got welcome. Uh, breadboard is for using the components here on the right, connecting up via a breadboard. Schematic is where we want to actually make a circuit diagram and PCB is when we want to design a printed circuit board. We could use all three in tandem, as what you do on one tab affects what appears on another tab, but in this case, we just want to start with PCB to do this easy nano terminal breakout board design. The important things are all the libraries on the right, and the first library we want to go into is Arduino, because we want to move across a Arduino Nano. If we look at, if we hover over all the parts, we can see their description down here in the section called Inspector. So the grey block is called PCB1 and it's giving us the dimensions and various details about it. If I hover across the Arduino boards at the top and here's one called Arduino Nano, I'm going to drag that in and drop that here. Now we want to orient it the way we want it to appear. So if I hover over the pins, there's D1, that's the actual pin number the starting pin number, we want that in the top right hand corner over here. So if I just click on the whole part, we see it appear here in the inspector bit. If I right click, I can then rotate it where I want. I want to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. If I click on it again, I can move it around by left clicking and dragging with my mouse. Let's put it fairly central. Now we're going to the main component that we're going to connect to, which is really to extend these pins out, are the terminal known as terminal blocks. So let's go back to our libraries here. If I go back to core, which is the main one. If I scroll down, you'll see pretty much all the libraries. You can do a search and we're going to go down to one called connection. If I hover across this blue one, it's called screw terminal two pins. I'm going to drag one of those in and then I'm going to right click and just orient that back the other way, 90 degrees. And put that up here for now. All right, we can see if I click into that, it has a designation, J1. Uh, we can change that and we'll change those after. But what I'm going to do for now is to just make duplicates of this. All right, now we've got most of the two-way connectors. What we're going to do is put two three-way connector terminal connectors here. And to do that, the default is a two pin. If we look in the inspector section over here, we can make that into a three pin. We're going to du duplicate the last one first. Duplicate it. Bring that down. And if we change it to three pins here in the inspector, let's change to three and we can pop that in there and we'll just do one more duplicate of that. 
These three ways are going to act, act as power rails, so we can connect sensors to these kind of things. The, most of these terminals will be for outputs and some sensor inputs as well. We're going to put in one more two-way for the external power, so we'll duplicate one of those. And we're going to pop this in, rotate that, one degrees clockwise and pop that around here. Um, if we want to position things, we could also go back to our core libraries, come down to tools such as the ruler. We could drag that in temporarily. So if you wanted to put the midway point at 4.5, if I could do that, I could rotate, rotate that ruler 90. We could use the ruler to position this centrally if we wanted. Once we don't need it, you can just delete it. So we're going to start connecting some tracks up from our Arduino Nano to these terminal blocks. We're now looking at the top layer where the components will go, such as the Nano itself and the terminal blocks. The tracks though, which will be the copper tracks, will be on the bottom layer. If we come down to these both layers section here, and let's click on set bottom layer clickable. Now this dims out the top layer, and allows us to lay tracks on the bottom layer, which we can see from the top layer. So let's try that. Our first usable pin that's going to connect to the first terminal here is actually D2. These first four are reserved for things like the transmission circuit from our PC to upload code to our Arduino, and the reset button and the ground or negative side of supply. More on this one later, which we'll use, but D2 we're going to connect up. So if we click that, drag across, you'll see a track appear in orange, which denotes bottom layer. If it was yellow, it would be the top layer and not be quite correct. But release it there, it puts a track between there and there. We can now put some bend points in. And what this looks like, if I double click, you're given a little circle like that. Click on that and we can click to wherever we need that track to be. And we can put several bend points in like so and ultimately we want it to look something like this later on we'll change the label to identify with that the second one is going to go to d3 and i'm going to quickly do this and speed this up and show you how it's done Now we're going to use the label function that these connectors already have. What we need to do first is go back to the layer clickable button set to both copper layers clickable. Click that, select our first terminal block, and this will help us understand what terminal block is connected to what pin. So we're going to click the terminal block, just click on the label J1, and you can move it over to here. Double click into that, and we're going to change that to reflect D2 and go OK. It's changed to D2, and if we follow the path of that track, it goes back to D2. Uh, we'll do the next one. Click on the connector, J2, move J2 to this point here. Double click that, and we're gonna make that D3. Go OK, follow this pin back, and it should be going to D3, it is. Now I'm gonna do all of them, label them all, and that'll explain how what tracks we've put to what terminals, and this will be sped up.
Now that we've got the labels, we also want to put some more labeling onto the board to designate the digital output negative connections. To do that though, we need to use what's called the text function. If we go to our core parts library, if we scroll down to find PCB view, click on text, drag it in, and it drags in a default logo. Here though, we can change it. We have to change it in the inspector section of fritzing. So if we go down here, we're going to change the text from logo to a minus or negative. It gives it a preset size. We can change this later. So what we're going to do, we're going to just rotate that as we normally would. And we're going to move that up to here. So now digital two positive going back to the D2 pin and this negative is going to the ground pin or the minus pin. We're going to duplicate that for all the digital pins. And we also need to add V in positive for our power supply terminal block down here. What we'll do, we'll grab that, duplicate it, move it in here. And I'll just go and do this quickly. It'll be sped up. We're now going to put V in plus here as a separate text. Back to PC view, grab text, drag it in, change it to back down here in the text part of the inspector to V in positive. Uh, we'll probably need to change the size. Click that, looks a little bit big. Let's make it match. I think it's about 10 mil. Let's try 10 mil down here and click. And that's looking a little bit bigger. We'll just drag that down. Just change it again here to be maybe 8 mil, and that's starting to look about the same size. The last couple of things to do here would be to save it. If you haven't saved already, it's the usual process. File, save as, choose the folder where you want to save it, and give it a name. The file format will save in is .fzz for Fritzy. All right, so the very last thing, we've got our final design here, and now we want to export it as an etchable PDF. There's two ways we can do that from the export for PCB button, or we can go up to our file menu, export for production, etchable PDF. This will open up a folder. Yeah, I want to save it in this location, but in a brand new folder, I'm going to call it nano breakout P PCB artwork. Just choose that. Select folder. If I go into that folder now, and then I break out PCB artwork. There's many variations, many files being produced here. The important one, or two at the most, is this one. It's the copper bottom. So it's the copper tracks at the bottom. If I was to open that, it would look like this. Uh, you could make a board that had a top, what we call top layer, called the silk top mirror. And that looks like that. But really, the main one is this copper bottom board. Well, we've pretty much finished the design for the board. Just a few quick notes on how it would work. You can see our design on the left. On the right was how it would look if it was being used in real life. Uh, the top, all the top terminals are digital pins, as is the D13 at the bottom. If you're going to connect LEDs, you'd make sure a resistor is in series with the LED through the positive pin of one of the, the digital pins and the negative side of the LED going to the negative part of a terminal block there. If you're going to use something like a piezo buzzer, it's all right to just connect it between the positive and negative terminals. For inputs though, you would use the bottom rows from A0 to A6. Here we can see a light dependent resistor or light sensor circuit where we've put the sensor output back into A0, either one of those two screws points on A0 would suffice and we can use a 5 volt in the ground to give power to the sensor. So we've now made a design and we've showed you how you can make a etchable PDF. The next logical step would be to make a printed circuit board based on the etchable PDF. Well the aim of this video was to use a circuit design software called Fritzing to design a simple printed circuit board and then be able to export a file that will allow us to manufacture it.